Hello, hello, my crafty friends. Dawn Robles. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator located in the uh, Phoenix metro area. And I want to welcome you back to week two of my Christmas series. I know, Christmas in October, who wants to think about it? But for, uh, for those of us that like to pre-plan, it's fun to get a jump start on all our crafting for the holidays. So today, as promised... I am bringing you a chocolate treat. So this, I've been making this cute little, I'm going to call it a wallet, okay? I've been making this cute little wallet for years and years. I've seen it on Pinterest when I first started crafting, and it's just been kind of one of those things that stuck with me. I think the original video I watched was with Dawn Griffith, so I want to give her credit because I do love this project. So when you open this up, it actually holds two full-size candy bars. I choose to put the Hershey's in there. I'm sure Crackle, Mr. Good Bar uh, would probably fit in there, but I just stick with the simple Hershey's. You can put a gift card in there as well cash fits in there perfectly as well. So today this is our project week two of the Christmas series. So I'm going to set these aside and then I'm going to steal the candy bars out of that because I don't have any extras. Um, before we get started I just want to let you know that I did use the sweet candy canes um, but I only use the sentiment candy cane wishes and mistletoe kisses and the, the leaves here. But from the die set I did for the um, clasp right here, I did use this die cut as well as the die cuts to cut out the leaf. Now I did use the Sweet Christmas uh, Designer Series paper and I love this paper. I've gone through so much of it this season. Uh, this season we're kind of back to traditional colors, the reds and the greens. And what I love about this particular print here is our dies actually fit the paper so we can cut these right out and that makes a super quick and easy card as well. Cut a couple of dies out, put it on some cardstock, stamp a sediment, and you are good to go. So these are the prints. I hope you can see them. It's six different prints, or six different sheets, two prints per, sh per sheet. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> and today we're going to make one using this print. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I did pull the little candy cane right here. I did pull it out of our Jingle 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 set and I just had to fussy cut that candy cane. So if you have that or any candy cane will work or any type of greeting will work because I make these for birthdays, I make them for Easter gifts, I just I make them for almost every occasion. So again, I'm just going to show you the basics. I did cut out most of my um, my parts and pieces and did the stamping because I just wanted to focus mainly on showing you how to make this. So the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a piece of cardstock that is cut at seven and eight by eight and a quarter. And I'm gonna show you how to cut that down. So we're gonna bring our handy dandy trimmer in. And I'm gonna, on the eight and a half side, I'm gonna cut that down to eight and a quarter. Rotate it and cut it at seven and one eighth. So this piece here is going to create the base of our um, wallet. To cut the two inside pieces that we're going to need, this piece here and this piece here, we're still going to use one piece of cardstock. So we're going to take the remaining piece and we're going to cut that down on the eight and a half inch side. We're going to cut that down to five and a half. And then we're going to cut this at 1 and 15 sixteenths. And that will give you an equal um, divider on each side. So 1 and 15 sixteenths, it's simply the mark right before the 2. 
and that way we don't have to get another piece of cardstock uh, to cut more. So we can do it all with one piece of cardstock. Then we're going to need some designer series paper. You're going to need one piece that is cut at one by five and three eighths, a second, another piece cut at two and an eighth by five and three eighths, and two pieces for the inside that are cut at one and a quarter by five and three eighths. If you have a corner rounder, that will be fantastic because I am going to use a corner rounder, which we no longer carry. Otherwise, you can just leave these edges squared and that will look great too. I just kind of wanted the, the rounded corners here, okay? So I'm gonna bring in my scoreboard and I see we're gonna have lighting problems again because I spent money on a light that doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so anyway, Enough of the rant. I'm going to take in my um, 1 and 15 sixteenths piece and I'm going to score that at 1 quarter and at 5 eighths. I'm going to do that on both pieces. That's all the scoring we have there. Set that aside. Then I'm going to bring in our, our base. And on the 7 and 1 eighth inch side, I'm going to score at 2 and 1 quarter, 2 and 5 eighths, 3, 5 and 1 quarter, and 6. I'm going to rotate the paper. And I'm going to score that at one, one and three eighths. And I'm going to go over to six and seven eighths and seven and one fourth. And that will be all the scoring we need. Okay. I apologize right now. This light is acting up. I thought I had it fixed, but evidently I don't. So. The light may go on and off during the video. Now we're going to remove some parts to our base. So you have this really hard to see on red. So we have this, 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 and this. These score, these are all going to be cut away. So I'm just going to put an X so you can see what I'm doing on both sides. And then we have where we did the let me see if you can see it. Yeah, okay. The three score lines. So we have the three score lines here. And we're going to cut these sections away as well. Like so. Okay. So I'm going to come in here and cut that away. Now you can use your trimmer here if you want. You can use longer scissors, which would be pretty helpful. We're just going to cut these away. Okay. And then to cut this piece out here, what I found easiest for me was to fold over on the score line and just trim that little center section away. Just like that, okay? Then you're just going to do, do the same on the other side. Okay, and then I'm going to fold in here. And again, cut that little center section away, just like that. If you have a corner rounder and you want to round your corners, now is the time to do it. I see I'm a little crooked on this one, so let me straighten that out just a little. Just a hair off. Okay. 
Okay, and so I'm going to bring in my corner rounder, and then I'm just going to round my corners here. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and fold on my score lines. Again, tip from the middle out, trying to keep both sides of your paper even. Rotate for me. Fold in on the second score line and fold in on the second score line. Okay, rotate around. Like so. Now we have one more cut we want to do. And with it being like this, with your top being where you rounded the corners, being at the top, we're going to cut from this point down here to this first score line. So from this point to the score line, just diagonally. So you can see. And then I'm going to flip it over. The diagonals we want all going in the same direction. Okay. So now you're now it should look like this. I'm going to bring in our other two pieces. And we're going to go ahead and fold and burnish on our score lines here. when there's a little score line these are only a quarter of an inch this piece here so and then I'm just going to adhere my DSP so this is going to be my one and a quarter inch DSP I'm just going to adhere them to both both panels I'm just going to go ahead and use a little liquid glue here So last year we did pretty non-traditional colors for Christmas. We did like the Blushing Brides and the Mint Macaron and it was so pretty. But I have to say I'm, I'm kind of happy to see the traditional colors again this year. What about you? Do you guys like the non-traditional colors at Christmas or the traditional? I like all kinds of weird things. I am definitely have my own taste I guess. Which is a good thing, right? Okay. So these panels are ready. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring in my tear and tape. Let me put my pin and my glue so it don't dry out on us. So I'm going to bring in my tear and tape. And from the second score line, right above the second score line, I'm just going to run a piece of uh, tear and tape right there. on both panels. You can, when we get to this part, you can definitely use liquid glue. I just, I want this to dry, I want this to be able to go together quickly. And if I use liquid glue, I'm gonna have to stand there and hold it while it adheres. And I'm impatient. <laughs> okay.
Okay. And then, so that adheres good, I'm going to just burnish it a little bit. And then on the outside piece, this bottom quarter inch right here, this is where it's going to attach to our base. You can do this two ways. Uh, liquid glue is fantastic, which is what I typically do. But again, I'm trying to show you this video, so I'm bringing in my 1 8 inch score tape, which you can get pretty much at any craft store. And of course, the handy dandy Amazon. Can't say that too loud because then Alexa turns her ears on. I say if you have the time to use the liquid glue, please do because that way it gives you a little bit of wiggle room when you're placing it. And then I'm just going to take a very small snip out of each end just so the, the box bends a little bit easier. Not a big one, just a very small. Okay, so to place the bottom piece here, I'm going to flip it over. So this is going to be the outside of the box. I'm flipping it over and I'm just lining it up between, if you fold your panels in like this, I'm going to line it up between here and here. Okay, so then when we put the box to the inside, it'll go in like so. Okay, and on the this panel here, we're going to attach it at the this score line here. So this is the bottom panel here. So one, two, three, on top of that third score line. Just remove my tear and tape real quick. Turn it this way to make it easy. Trying to do without getting my head in the camera to see where I'm at. Okay. And then we're just going to assemble the box. So we're going to remove our tear and tape from the back here. We're going to fold this in. So it's like this and then we're just going to bring this around to match up our sides like so. And give it a press. Do the same thing on the other side. Again, liquid glue will give you a little bit of wiggle room, whereas when you use the tear and tape, once you stick it down, it's down. And just repeat up here. Bring that in, line it up like so. Do the same thing on the other side. I have to share something with you guys. I shot this video once already today, and when I went to upload it, there was no sound. I have no idea what happened, but the sound was completely turned off, so I got to start all the way over. So now our box is ready. We can close her up, just like so. I'm going to go ahead and put the candy bar in there because that gives you a little more... Um, Sturdiness, I guess, when we're putting the, the magnet and the DSP. Now, I've used a magnet in here, but you can definitely use Velcro. It's just I like that hidden look of the magnet. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Again, you can purchase these on Amazon. So I'm going to use two magnets. And the best way to adhere your magnets to your cardstock is glue dots. They hold, I'm going to throw my candy bars in there, and my gift card. Close up my box here, line it up to the sides, and then just kind of eyeball it and throw that magnet on the inside. No 
don't press it down. Make sure when you close it, that's going to get a good, and it does. You can press that one down, close it up, like so, and the magnet will find its home. And then I just take my one inch strip of DSP, and I'm going to round the corners on that as well. Again, you do not have to do this step. This is totally optional. If you don't have a corner rounder, it looks just as pretty without it. And then I'm just going to adhere this with liquid glue. And that will keep my magnet in place. And then I put a little around here. It's for a little extra oomph. Okay, press it down at the top where the magnet is, and then you can come here and just hold this down for the glue to adhere. You can also use tear and tape for this as well. But I found that the liquid glue looks, works really good, and if you just press and hold for a minute, then it keeps that designer series paper in place where it needs to be. Same thing with the bottom piece. It's time to go ahead and add it. And you can add this just with regular stamp and seal. Um, I just have my liquid glue here, which is what I use a lot of anymore. Oh, let me put a little extra around the magnet just to, just to hold it. And then I'm just going to put that and that up a little bit. Make sure I'm good here. I'm good there. Press it down. And your box is made. How simple was that? I am totally stoked about it. So now we're just going to do the finishing touches. Like I said, I've already done all the stamping and everything for you. Uh, to For the circle labels, you can use either like a one and a quarter inch um, circle punch with your one and three eighths scallop which is retired or we have the uh, layering circles which is what I used and I used the second to smallest circle and the second to smallest scallop so that is how I got that and I'm going to throw some dimensionals on the back of that one right away I cut the cute little label here and all I had here was a 3 8 um, inch piece of garden green just 3 8 inches I think it's like three and a half inches long um, and I'm just going to slide it through the holes here just to give it a little more dimension and I thought I wanted tails on it so I'm, I just will cut a few so to cut the tails on it you just kind of eyeball it seriously make a tiny snip depending on how big you want your your flagged end to be and there you go I think this takes longer than the box huh <laughs> okay and then I'm just gonna attach it right here and I'm, I'm going to use liquid glue and what I'm going to do is I'm going to line the bottom of my flag up to the bottom of my um, lid like so so you're just going to put glue on the very top half of there and then just eyeball it and put it where you want it and again you can use any label you can use any um, you can make this for any holiday. Okay, then I'm going to pop up my cute little saying. And it would be perfect like that, right? Uh, only I'm going to add a few little deals. So what I did is I used the bow punch from the annual catalog right here. And I just um, punched one of each of these. I punched this one in the silver foil and I punched this out of our sparkling um, 
I forget what it's called anyway. It's like the, the dazzling diamonds, the sparkling glitter, sparkling glitter paper, I think it's called. So I just did that. I stamped two of the leaves. Like I told you, I did the candy cane and the sweet sorbet baker's twine. And I thought the leaf needed a little dimension, and my, my friend Esty showed me this the other day. So I'm going to add a little dimension to this. So I'm going to take my tweezers, and I'm just going to put it on either side of that. And I'm going to twist one side up and one side down. So, like so. And that will give you a little dimension on your flower. So that I thought that was super cool. The other way you can add dimension if you don't have tweezers like that is simply on your scoring board. You can do this on your cutter with your scoring blade. Um, and you can take your stylus, line it up in a groove, and just put a mark in there. And that will also give it a little dimension. I love when you have talented friends and they share all their awesome tips with you. It's so much fun. Um, so if you want to, if you're thinking about joining Stampin' Up, give my team a try. Uh, we enjoy our get-togethers and we're always sharing fun, exciting new tips. So I'm just going to kind of slide that in where I want it. And then I will attach that with a little bit of liquid glue. Or glue dots you can either use either one but I think before I do that I'm going to snip some of that bottom off there and then I'm just going to slide that in and it looks pretty there when you're attaching like the glitter paper to the foil you can use glue but I'm going to tell you it takes a little bit longer to dry I've been doing that and it slides everywhere so the best way to do that is to use a glue dot and I'm just using one and I'm just going to kind of slide it where I think it's going to look good and then I'll adhere that and then I'm going to take one of my leaves add a little glue to the leaf and slide that in Move that over a little bit that way and then put that leaf maybe a little like so. And I'm going to even it out so I'm going to slide a leaf in over there. Actually, let me do the candy cane first. To attach the candy cane, I'm just putting a little bit of liquid glue on the very bottom. I'm going to slide it under and I'm going to kind of lean that candy cane on the top of the sentiment. Then I'll add this bottom leaf here. Like so. Then I'm going to add my little bow. been smart if I'd have rolled that and then put it on but nope didn't do it <laughs> did it the hard way and then I'm just going to kind of finish it off with that little bow and there you have it so fun Christmas project who doesn't like chocolate who doesn't like getting a gift card if you want to give something extra with it um for I will list the supplies below it'll take you to my online store and show you all the supplies that I used um if you need a, if you're in need of a catalog, please DM me and I will make sure to get that out to you either in the mail or if you're in the West Valley in the Phoenix area, I will probably drop it on your porch. So guys, go out there, make it a great day and happy crafting.